Okay, you're back with Headbangers Ball. We're still talking to Gravity Kills in Belgium. And uh, guys, you were talking how things were um, pretty instantaneous for you in, uh, when you all got together in the overall scheme of things. And a lot of bands um, that are together for a long time, they have a chance to kind of develop their sound and their style and their direction. But you didn't really have too much chance to do that. So was it, were you all of just the same kind of musical vision? And how did you get the whole package together? You know what's interesting is we all probably have distinctly different musical visions, but I think the great thing about this is this is maybe the first band that I've ever been in where I trust everyone else's musical vision. And so, you know, it's like if, if Kurt or Matt are writing guitar parts or bass parts and he's doing production and I'm working on a vocal part, everybody sort of lets lets them bring into Gravity Kills what they had with them before they were there. Like I came sort of out of you know, metal into industrial influences where Doug, you know, was a totally different thing. Yeah, more Eurocentric. Gary Newman, Human League, New Order, Erasure, right. not so much into American music. And then, of course, uh, Matt and Kurt come from punk, right. uh, you know, 999 and... Yeah, Stiff Little Dora. Fingers and, yeah, Killing Joke and bands like that. So yeah. it's like... You get this hybrid, you get this blend of everybody, you get the sort of the dance with the guitars yeah. and the... the, yeah, the and me screaming a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and then we all, so it's sort of like, you know, a nice culmination of all the influences that all of us have brought in, which, yeah. you know, I think spent too many time, too long in bands, like, trying to worry about getting a, a unity of one vision. Yeah. And I think this time around, uh, we were just on this horrible deadline, we had four months to finish up the rest of the album, we only had three songs done, and they, and uh, you work so, you have to work so quickly, you can't think about what you're doing, and so you just you know go you just you're problem solving and just okay that song's done next one right. and then you just wind up with an album oh and, and of course we were working digitally the nice thing about sequencing working on a sequencer and working on uh, on the sonic solutions is it's it stays very visceral you, the song's never really done because you can always you know well, what if we put the chorus first oh, and you just chop it and, it and it just stays very fluid and then you dump it down to tape after that so just wanted to quickly mention the lyrics because to me they seem to be a bit um is psychological the right word? Maybe mind games, maybe destructive relationships. Is there any kind of overall theme? No, but uh, you know, you, pr you probably hit on a lot of the topics, and as well, it's always it seems that um, you know a, a lot of things that we write about really internal, you know, as far as like conflicts and struggles within mm -hmm. yourself, as opposed to you know, other people uh, bringing bad things upon you. You know, it's always the inner struggles that people go through every day of their lives. And you know, literally, these guys would lock me into a, a basement of a, you know, of the studio with a couple candles, and I would hear the track, and we would just start working, right. and the mood sort of would just emerge out of, you know, out of that as opposed to you know trying to think of some cool hooky little line to sing. Right. So once again, very spontaneous. Okay, well, uh, I have to say, you guys make very, very spectacular videos. They've gone down hella well at Headbangers Ball, so we're going to check out right now the brand new video from Gravity Kills. You've seen it before, but you're going to see it again right now because it's well worth it. And uh, this is Gravity Kills with Enough. Well, we're winding up our interview uh, with Gravity Kills, and um, we've seen both their videos tonight, and as I said, excellent videos, guys. Um, and I'm sure that the videos have, have helped um, contribute to um, your success. Is that something that you particularly, f you actually in really enjoyed the creative side of making the videos as well? Well, for Guilty, it was a different story than Enough. I think for Guilty, you know, we were, it was, since it was the first video that we had in the States, I think we really... Uh, we're bit, we're really involved, and then with enough, I think we went, we were just so uh, bent on doing something different. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't want to we didn't want to keep doing videos that were all about you know all you know dark and gloomy. Yeah. And I think that's why enough turned out to be so different. Same director, yeah. You know, it was just Put a lot more bright and a lot more colors and light. But it's funny though, the videos are very much about this sort of about the same thing. You know, sort of about you know like you know enough sort of get this you know this sort of greed and glittery feel to it where, you know, we're guilty sort of about the same thing but more covert. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, you know, maybe the same themes that we wanted to, to uh, portray right. but just uh, visually different. Right. I mean, do you also um, attribute some of your success to really just having kind of maybe the right sound at the right time? Oh gosh! Yeah, I hope so. That was uh, there's a strange hybrid that that we had just come up with to to take the dance and add the heavy guitars to it. But I I think 
I don't know, something that we really pride ourselves on is the live show. And we've worked extremely hard on that all, all last year, trying to, and it, you know, and even now bringing it more up to speed. Um, it seems, because we noticed in America there are bands that, that can sell a lot of records, but they don't necessarily sell lots of tickets. You know, they can't do any better than maybe 100 people in any one city. Or, uh, you know, or have a big single on the radio and still can't draw people. Mm -hmm. And so I think the live show is a, is a really important aspect of you just can't really go up there and stand around. The only unfortunate thing I think with our show is that it's so physically taxing that I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I gotta do this for the rest of my life. Oh, you know, and it's just, yeah, you know, I wish I was in a band that could stand there and play and get away with it. It would just be so much easier. No, it's much more fun the way you do it though. Yeah, I guess. Oh my it God. is more fun. Yeah, I wouldn't want to stand around picking my nose or something. And you've already played over 200 shows in America, which I was actually quite surprised to find out. So um, you're getting plenty of practice. So actually, this kind of you kind of answered this question, but um, some people might say, "Oh, you're a flash in the pan." So what um, what steps do you feel that you can take to maintain the longevity of the band? You know, just keep working as hard as we can, and and playing live is the first step. Making records is the second step, I think. And and when we go back in the studio, you know, we're not going to think about you know, writing another enough or writing another guilty, you know, we're just going to go in and make a record that hopefully we love, because if, you, if you're making a record that you don't like, chances are no one else is going to like it either. So, you know, that's really all that we can do um, to maintain the success that we've had so far. And, and You've probably developed so much as a band over the last year or so that the next record's going to be even more exciting and challenging for you. Mm -hmm. well, we did a song, there's a, a Gary Newman tribute album that's coming out. <laughs> and so I think that the piece of music that we've done there called Poetry and Powers is, might be more a, a, yeah, an indication of what we're going to do on the next okay. album. Okay, so just to finish then, I guess 97 is going to be touring, touring and more touring? That's it, yeah. That's right. On the second album. Never going home. All right. Well, uh, lovely to talk to you. Thank you for joining me. And I wish you lots of luck in Europe. And I'm sure we'll catch up with you again soon. And uh, Happy New Year, if it's not too late to say that. But Never is. <laughs> All right. So that's Gravity Kills, and we're winding up tonight's edition of Headbangers Ball. Um, we're going to leave you with some more live performance from the guys. And uh, we're signing off now from uh, Belgium, and I'll see you next week back in the studio. So uh, from all of us here, we're saying hasta luego. See ya.